Hello, welcome back to Hostify, my name is Alex and today we're looking at UISP Switch 1.6.0 Beta 3, 4 and 5. So about 17 days ago, just under a month, uh, Ubiquiti released version 1.6.0 uh, Beta 3 for the UISP Switch and it brought support for a GUI for the very first time. So back when the UISP Switch was in the beta in the EA store, um, the very first versions were sort of an edge switch underneath. Uh, they had a GUI, they had a very similar GUI to the Edge Switch X, um, but with the UISP devices, albeit the, the wireless ones, but just the switching devices and the routers, the router devices, um, they've all of them have gone away with not having a GUI. So they've been solely reliant on the UISP interface. And that, for a few people, can be a sticking point. Um, they don't want to spin up a UISP controller just to have one switch. Um, you booked the offer it for free with 10 devices, and then Hostify, here at Hostify, we, we charged $99 for it, regardless of... Um, how many minimum devices you have so you could up to you can have up to 250 devices um, obviously some people don't have 10 devices they might have they may just have a USB router and a switch and maybe something else and that was the only real way to get the device managed so thankfully uh, with the new beta release Ubiquiti are finally moving to giving us a GUI with the USB switch and this this extends to the USB switch pro and hopefully it will make its way to the USB router and the router pro and all the other devices that they have in that line I mean as I mentioned the wireless devices can be both managed by a GUI and they could be managed by a USB application as well. So in this video we're going to upgrade my USB switch to the latest version, uh, beta 5, and that will bring the features they've announced in beta 3 and 4 uh, with support for that, that new GUI as well as create and assigning VLANs to one or more ports at a time using that uh, new feature as well. So the first thing I want to do is go back to my uh, Hostify controller, so my USB Hostify controller. Uh, I've already got this switch uh, adopted to the USB controller in a previous video. We've looked at the USB switch, what it can do, uh, VLAN tagging, and then port lag as well. But I've got this up to date. It's on version 1.5.2. And to get this updated to the latest version, I've got to manually upload a file to the USB controller, and then I can upgrade the switch because it's a custom, custom version there. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go to the settings in USB, and then across to updates. And then I've got available firmware, and you can see there's some public versions here, so 1.5.1 and .2, and then you can go to advanced, and then you can manually upload firmware, or I can download beta firmware. So I'm going to click on the download beta firmware instead, actually, and press apply, and hopefully it will find the, the new beta version on there. So if it doesn't, we will um, manually update the version. So we'll go to back to devices, back to upgrades. Um, so no, it hasn't just found that version just yet so I will manually be upgrading this now so we'll go back to the the forums go beta 3 as, is, as you can see it's got the new the new GUI then we'll have a look at that in a minute and then go beta 5 and then we can go download links USB switch that's downloaded to my downloads folder so I'm going to upload this to the uh, USB controller now so it's just uploading the switch file now it's about 11 megabytes in size, quite small, so we can close that now. And if we go back to here, so we've got the custom version on here. I have just noticed that the beta tab has just loaded in, and at the moment, the version for the Switch is not yet available. There is some stuff for the air fibers, the ISO stations and things. Uh, there is not yet the, the version for the Switch that we've got, so I'm glad it automatically updated it. Uh, so custom is in there, 1.6.0 beta 5. So if we go back to devices, we can now see that the update is now available for the Switch. So we click on change now, and we'll come back once that's done. So now that the USB switch is up to date, it's on version 1.6.0 beta 5, we're about to access that new GUI. So if we go onto the IP address here and click on that, it will bring us to a new login page. As before, if you remember, just had a page saying you can't use this, or even the port was closed sometimes as well. So port 80 was just completely closed. Uh, we've now got USB switch, the Ubiquiti logo up there, but a quite a nice redesigned username password box. And then once you adopt stuff to USB, um, it does tend to have its own password set by the application. So what you have to do for those devices is click on Manage on the device panel, and then you can click on Show Password. And as long as you've got the USP Credentials Vault set up, the password will be here. If you haven't got one set up, uh, you'll be able to set a new a new one and then set a password for that device, so long as it is connected to USP. Uh, so the nice thing about USP is you can remotely set passwords if you need to. So I'm going to copy the password there. Username is UBNT. Go back to the device, type in UBNT for the username. And then the password, and then we'll sign in. So we've got a quite a nice little simple GUI here, so very similar to the Edge Router X devices. Um, so we've got the throughput in the top left-hand corner, that's throughput for the entire device. There's one port active, so that's my uplink port. 
They've got the RX and TX. Again, very, very similar to the Edge Switch devices, the Edge, Edge Switch X, which is this is essentially what it is. And then on this side, we've got lag devices, uh, lag settings. So very similar to the USB application there. We've got ports here, so we can enable port 2. We can uh, set the PoE. So we've got 27 volt PoE on this device. Uh, the reason it is 27 volt is a few people have asked me that. Um, it's to cope with uh, voltage loss, essentially. So if you're running these in a WISP application, Generally, you've got very long cable runs. As um, long as it's under 100 meter, it's fine, but it's just to cope with that extra bit of voltage. And then the new devices like the USP Wave AP, um, that does accept 24 volt, but the extra three volts uh, does tend to make it a little bit more reliable, especially when it's under load. So that's the reason. You can use any 24 volt device on the USP Switch and the USP Switch Pro uh, with 27 volts. That three extra three volts isn't gonna cause you a problem. If anything, it's gonna make it more reliable in outdoor environments. Uh, we've got some information here, so we've got the uh, RX-TX packets, we've got connected devices, so it's a Ubiquiti device we've plugged in, which is correct, it's a, U it's a Unify 8 switch, uh, let's use the MAC address to look that up, we've got, uh, you can reset the port, you can look at settings, again that's the same sort of thing as clicking on here. Uh, it's a very clean design, very very good there, uh, we've got the ups here, we've got the USP short link to the USP application that it's connected to, uh, we've got change password and then log out. Left hand side we've got uh, a VLANs tab, so again, identical to the edge switch devices, we've got very simple to use VLAN settings. Uh, this is a setting that Unify, uh, the Unify application is moving towards, a very standardized uh, way of looking at VLANs. We've got trunk ports, trunk unidentified VLANs. We've got a very easy to use VLAN setup there, so we can add a new VLAN, VLAN 50. Uh, we can create that new VLAN, it's excluded from all ports, so we can click that to untag it, tag, uh, exclude as well, so we can delete that VLAN there. And uh, we've got settings as well, uh, we're going to move on for that. It's got the device name, so this is the MAC address, and then the device name there. Uh, the IPv4 connections, so DHCP or static IP. Management VLAN, so again, that it, what that's doing is whatever VLAN is tagged on the uplink port, it will then untag it for itself, that's where I like to describe it. So it will take any tag VLANs that are coming into the uplink port, untag it for its own use, and then pass it on. Uh, so we can specify a management VLAN if we need to. Got jumbo frames. We can also now use the USB switch in an unmanaged state. So, as long as we get a USB switch, adopt it, update it, then we can unadopt it uh, if we need to, and then we can use it in a standalone configuration. So, for people that are not too convinced or not too sure about using USB or can't use it because they've only got a few devices, so this is your switch in your house for any reason, um, you can now use it without the USB application. We've got remote system log, SSH, we can turn on and off, uh, NTP clients, and you can make it discoverable and that sort of thing. And lastly, we've got the tools. We've got the Mac table over here. We can now ping devices. It's got my iMac there on a few different different IP addresses. Uh, we can ping devices as well. So we're going to ping Google's DNS. And we'll get standard results. Again, this is standard edge switch stuff, really. And we've got discovery as well. So it'll pick up all the Ubiquiti devices that's on my VLAN here. And so it should, in theory, pick up the UXG Pro and the Unify 8 switch. I've got on the same VLAN, but it hasn't, unfortunately, possibly because they're adopted to a host of a controller. Uh, some Unify devices don't make themselves discoverable if they are currently adopted. So that's been a look at the USB switch, uh, the new GUI that Ubiquiti have launched within 1.6.0 beta 5. Hopefully, uh, this, this release will come to general availability and release candidate very soon. I'm looking forward to that coming out because there's a lot of people that, are, again, um, don't want to use the USP application, but they want to use the new USP devices. So what do you think about this new GUI for the USP switch? It's good that they're allowing some configurability outside of the USP application for the first time. Uh, hopefully, as I said, this comes to the USP router devices, the USP router pro, that huge device that's quite powerful, and then the USP console. I'm not sure that will come to that device uh, simply purely that's based on uh, hosting the USP application. We have got a video that we published earlier this year where we look at adopting the USP console uh, to a Hostify application and that works pretty well actually, it just becomes a router in itself. And then we've got the USP router, again physically identical to the USP switch, just a router instead. So let me know what you think about this new update down in the comments below, uh, I was interested to see what you think. If you want to learn more about Hostify, visit our website hostify.com. We do hosting for Unify, USP and TP-Link Armada. Uh, we do consulting with Hostify Pro, so you can hire an expert today and get help with all manner of things from WISP applications to uh, configuring your Wi-Fi. Uh, so have a look at hostify.com forward slash pro and then hire an expert today. And then if you've got any questions about hosting for Unify, USP or TP-Link Armada, let our support team know, support at hostify.com, and they'll be sure to help you out. Again, thanks for watching this video. My name's Alex, and we'll see you again next time.